And subtle touch here is that we want to add a bit of money to our players because they completed this round. Uh, modify player one minerals. Let's add. Let's just add the current wave. So if we're on wave four, we'll get four minerals. If we're on wave two, we'll get two minerals. Modify add current wave. Okay. So now we're done with the wave end, and now let's do um, and the the lo minus in the lives. So new trigger. Unit enters end region. Okay. New event. Unit enters slash leaves a region. A unit, any unit, enters and click the first bracket and just change it to end region. Any unit enters the end region and, however, this has to be player three. So one of his um, bad guys walking through there. And what we want to do is variable, modify variable, integer, modify the lives to be minus one. And then let's set the leaderboard. Let's update the leaderboard, I mean. Leaderboard, um, set the name. Set name of killboard to, and we need to do a string combination here, to be lives, colon space, and then a conversion. Convert integer to text, and the variable is lives. So now it'll update with our lives. And let's, um, you could play a sound, I'm just not going to do it here, but you could do a sound that plays when you lose lives, or you could even display a message, you could display um, 20 lives left or something, using similar tactics that I did with these kind, uh, hold on, with these kind of messages, combining strings, it's up to you to kind of do that, I want to leave that for you guys, and, however, um, one thing we need to do here is remove the unit, not kill them. We want to remove them because we don't want the leader. We don't want this triggered. If you kill the unit when it enters the end region, it's going to run this trigger and it's going to be messy because there's no killing player. So you want to actually remove the triggering unit from the game, um, and then copy paste. And now we need to do an if condition to determine if you, if the player ran out of li if the players ran out of lives, you want to end the game right there. So new condition. Uh, okay. So if variable lives less than or equal to zero. Sometimes you want to, or I mean, most of the time you want to do less than or equal to because it might two units might enter at the same time and it might skip zero or something. So less than or equal to zero instead of just equals equals. And then new action game and the game in defeat for player one and the game in defeat for player two. And then after this if statement, outside of this if statement, we want to do another action, and we want to run our wave end. So this is the reason why, um, oops, and wait. So this is the reason why I made wave end these actions on its own. I could have put all of these inside here and inside here, but then if I made one small change to here, I'd have to do it inside here and inside here. So instead of that, I'll just make this one run wave end and this one run wave end if they need to do it. And if there happens to be no units on the map, um, owned by player three, it'll end the game, end the wave, and go on to the next wave. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it's just a little like fail-safe kind of thing by doing it like that. Um, it's just safer and better to uh, put it into one one trigger that's that's called by both of these two separately. Because if if uh, units are entering the end region and it happens to be the last unit that entered there, and the game's now empty of bad bad units you want to check that it's the wave end but also when you if you kill all the units in the round you want to check that it's the wave end as well so they'll both run this trigger and um, last thing we're going to do here new trigger is sell tower money like I said we do this so unit any unit is issued an order and the order is going to be cell tower. There it is right there, the one we made. Um, and let me just check something in my notes here. So we got our knit, we got our spawn way, we got our choose team, unit dies, wave end. So after the cell tower, we're going to actually go in game and test and see just how many bugs I've racked up over the course of an hour and 30 minutes, about. Uh, 
I can't believe I've been doing this for an hour and 30 minutes. It goes by pretty fast when you're stuck in this editor. Um, that's player, modify player property, modify player. Oops. Where's owner of unit? Oops, what am I doing here? I need to find... Ah, there you go. I can't believe I missed that. Uh, owner of triggering unit minerals. And then we want to add. And we need to do a math here because we want 50%. Arithmetic divided by 2. And the value is going to be, and this is something nice I discovered, is going to be the um, unit type cost, the minerals cost of unit type, unit type of trigger unit. So it's going to give, and so this is going to depend on the um, on the repair resource that we set, not on the actual building cost. So that's why you need to set the repair resource, even if we don't have repairing going on. Um, so now it'll, this thing, will, the selling will depend on that. So you need to make sure you set that. And why don't we go in game and test this and see what the hell is going to happen? Okay, we got a dialogue. Everything appears here. I'm going to choose the star team. Begin building appeared. Okay. Um, oops. Build small star tower. Okay. Good. Units are coming. Wave one small beast. Everything appears to be working. Our turrets. Um, I'm not a turrets. Our buildings are turning. And we lost a couple lives. And let's see how the upgrade works. And boom, it's upgraded. It's damage is upgraded. And let's see how sell works. Good, we got two. That's half of its price. And that is good. Everything is pretty much working. I'm actually amazed for once. Um, oh, I got defeated because I lost a lot of lives. But let's restart. And this time, I'm going to choose the flesh team. So let's choose the flesh team. I've got my drone now build basic mini flesher I mean oops and I can't build anywhere so why don't we go back to the data editor okay so the issue was that um, our footprint for our guy was set to creep uh, for our mini flesher so open your mini flesher unit and go down to the footprint here and change the first one to contour two by two and change the second one to just regular there we go and now let's go test again and see Okay, so I'm going to choose the flesh team. Um, okay, and I'm going to build my mini flesher. All right. Let's see how these guys do. Yeah, and they're turning and everything. Let's sell it. We should get three back. Yeah, we did. Oh, I'm doing pretty bad. I shouldn't have sold that tower. I'm already down to 12 lives. And wave one... In. That should be wave two in. Um, and this timer's not going away. And I'm doing pretty bad actually. And my kills aren't updating. So why don't we try and fix all those? So the timer and the kills. Um, so what I forgot to do is actually was set the uh, set the wave timer window. Uh, let's see. Set the wave timer window to equal the last created timer window. Uh, that was a pretty obvious mistake, um, and that should fix up a lot of problems with that. Um, and let's see. Uh, okay, wave one in. Yeah, that should, hopefully that'll fix up the number of problems with that. And um, where is this? Where's our unit dies? Enemy unit dies there. Uh, variable, yeah. Let's try making this killing player plus one, and let's see what happens. That's, leaderboards are kind of wonky lately, so I've been kind of, even even after testing them multiple times, I get mixed results. So let's go in game and find out now. Okay, I'm going to choose flesh. Okay, BS. That's funny that the hotkeys for this is BS. I didn't realize that beforehand. That's all I can afford. So, yep, the thing's gone now. And uh, my kills still aren't updating. 